Welcome. My name is Jesse and you are listening to The Wake Up Call. This show is about opening your eyes to how you've been living, bringing awareness to the standard you've been operating at, and helping you start living to your full potential. There are two ways I'll help you do this. One, by disciplining your mind, and two, by strengthening your body. It's time to take stock of your current performance and go to the next level. Let's do this. We are back. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with great pleasure that I have finally decided to get off my ass and revive the podcast. I have had a lot that has happened over the last six months, three, six months in uh, my own life and my uh, my family life. Um, I'll get the big news off the table if you are not already aware. My lovely wife and I have, uh, we have a baby. We had a baby um, earlier this year. She has just turned 13 weeks old. And um, that has really been the emphasis of my life over the last, you know, three, six months is preparing to have a baby, having a baby, and now bringing this baby up, looking after her and, you know, seeing her grow, um, which is happening really, really quickly, by the way. So... Uh, life certainly has changed at the uh, in the Fuller household. Um, very, very excited, very happy to have our healthy baby girl. Um, but I've had requests over the last few weeks and months. Hey, Jesse, when are you going to bring the podcast back? Hey, haven't heard a new podcast episode for a while. What's going on, man? So, um, yeah, very busy and uh, a little bit of a shift in priorities. Not making excuses, but uh, things have changed in uh, in my life. It's not to say that the podcast is dead. I actually do want to revive it and do it on a more regular basis. Um, in saying that, it is a little bit more challenging having a little one and trying to do it at an appropriate time where I do not wake her up. Because as you know, if you are a regular listener, I do get a bit excited. I do go on tangents. I sometimes go on rants and uh, I do not want that to interfere or, or disturb my little baby's sleep. So anyway, that's a little bit of a spiel of what's been happening on a personal level. A little baby girl for my wife and I, a uh, little Daisy. She is absolutely wonderful. Um, but yeah, I wanted to get a podcast up and running, something out for you guys listening. So if you are a regular listener, welcome back. If you are brand new, welcome. The Wake Up Call is a podcast where my goal as your host is to pump you up. I am here to inflate your ego. I'm here to make you feel good about yourself. No, I'm not. That's a lie. For, for the regulars, you know what I'm talking about. But for, for, for the new listeners, if you are not already aware, my name is Jesse. Um, I've been a strength coach for the better part of... 13 years now and I call things as I see them I've been in the fitness industry for a very long time I've seen what works I've seen what doesn't and quite frankly I am fed up with the information and the style of fitness information that is being put out in the world everybody wants results here and now nobody wants to be told the hard truths um, so that's where I come in. I'm here to give you hard-hitting truths. I'm here to tell you what you need to hear and what you need to know, not just what you want to hear, okay? Because there's enough of that already floating around in the universe and on the interwebs. You're not going to hear any positive affirmations and, you know, there's no sunshine, unicorns, rainbows, lollipops, fairy dust that's going to magically help you get to where you want to go physically or mentally, the bottom line is there are no shortcuts. You are going to have to put in the work. You're going to have to put on your big boy or big girl pants and get to work, okay? Now, a little bit of background where things have been happening over the last three, six months. As I said, uh, my wife and I have a lovely baby girl. Uh, football season has finished, so thank God. Um, over the last 18 months, I've had some pretty tough injuries Hopefully, I have had enough. So this year, uh, what are we, November of 2021, this year, I came out of having osteitis pubis. Um, very, very 
tough injury to navigate and deal with. So I had osteitis pubis. Uh, I got a broken nose, which was just wonderful. So I had to get that uh, pushed back into place to straighten it up. And I also had a hamstring strain as well. So three injuries to contend with this year, all coming from sport. So I'm now in my off season and I am back doing what I have missed for a really long time and that is kettlebell training. I'm going full force back into my kettlebells because I love the simplicity of this handheld gym. I don't have to really think about what's on the cards for training. I am currently following a program called Simple and Sinister, written by Pavel Satsulin. He is the godfather of kettlebells. He brought them to the West and popularized them. So if you'd like to find out more about that, go on, search it, Google it, Simple and Sinister. He has a book, and I am following that for the next six months. That's right. The program consists of two exercises, the Turkish get-up and the kettlebell swing. So the training is very boring, and that suits me down to the ground. I'm one of these people, I'm like a dog with a bone. If I have a task or a goal that I want to accomplish and I know what I need to do to achieve it, boom, off I go. I grab the plan, I follow it through, I do it as it's intended, as it's written down, as I've been instructed, and I follow it to completion until I reach my end goal or until it no longer serves its purpose. So simple and sinister, to, to make things very simple for you, this is the training program. So for me, I'm training Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. This is simple and sinister. 100 kettlebell swings, so 50 each arm. So you do 10 on the left, you rest, you do 10 on the right, you rest, and you do 100 swings. Then you do 10 Turkish get-ups. Five each side, left side, rest, right side, rest, and you do that until you've done 10 reps. That's it. So I do three exercises in a circuit for my warm up, and then I do that training which I've just explained to you, and that is it. So currently, my starting point for this program is 24 kilos. One arm swing, 100 reps. 10 Turkish get ups at 24 kilos. If I follow the program to a T, and it does what it's supposed to do, and I follow it and I do it well, and I keep refining and improving my technique, I will be at the 32 kilogram kettlebell in six months time, which I believe is a 33% increase in strength. So for me, that's awesome. I'm really excited. Turkish get up is gonna improve my overall mobility through my shoulder, through my thoracic spine, through my hips. I'm gonna get some really good body awareness. I'm gonna keep my joints really mobile and I'm gonna get strong as fuck. The swing is gonna make me very powerful through the hips, through the posterior chain, hamstrings, glutes, midsection. These are areas that I really need to work on and develop. And the great thing with the one arm swing is it is an asymmetrical exercise. The hips, the glutes, the hamstrings, they are working bilaterally. They are both working regardless if it's a left arm or a right arm swing but I'm getting an asymmetrical load through my upper body. The kettlebell wants to rotate my body, it wants to pull me forwards and drag me across from left to right or vice versa. This is where my back muscles, my shoulder girdle and my core have to work incredibly hard to resist that rotation. 100 swings, 10 get ups, that's it. Bob's your uncle, that's training. So that's where I'm at with my training. On the business side of things, it's business as usual. I'm still coaching people out of my private training facility. It's going great. I'm really enjoying it. It's been great to you know get back in and help people with their training who take it seriously. And I do want to go through one small topic with you because this is fresh in my mind. I spoke to a buddy of mine yesterday uh, or a couple of days ago. And I think it's worth mentioning to you guys. As listeners of the Wake Up Call, I'm not going to sugarcoat things. I'm going to tell you what I think. No holds barred. All right. A buddy of mine who is also an SFG1 instructor, so that's the level one certification through Strong First, 
he asked me the other day, like, Jesse, why is it that some people just can't get their fucking act together, pull their finger out, pay for a coach, and get great results? So he gave me a story of one person who, they were in a lot of pain. They've got some back pain. So anyway, this person, he spoke to him for a long time and said, this is what I did because he also had a back injury. And he said, I hired a coach. I used him for like six months and he still receives coaching to this day. And he's moving so much better. He's out of pain. He's stronger than ever. He's more mobile than ever. And he also recently got asked to assist in the certification. He was asked to be an assistant instructor for the certification, which is a really big deal. It's a big honor in the Strong First community. But anyway, he was telling me this guy chose not to do anything. He said he gave him a referral to the exact coach he used to help him. So he said, go and see this person. Do what they tell you to do. You'll be well on your way. And this person said, nah, I'll be okay. I'll just keep going to see my physio. So this person didn't want to make a change. He keeps complaining about having this back injury and this pain and he can't move well. He's like, no, no, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. Anyway, long story short, this poor guy fucks himself up, has to go for surgery, has a whole host of complications, gets an infection, and he's in a world of pain. So anyway, the long story, the, the, the long, the point I'm trying to get at here is I can't make you do anything about your situation. And my mate was asking me, he's like, how do you how do you make someone, you know, do what they need to do? Well, the simple answer is this, you can't. I can't sit here and say, you need to do something about your situation. You need to start lifting weights, or you need to clean up your diet, or you need to work on getting uncomfortable and discipline yourself. I, I, can, I can lead a horse to water, but I can't make it drink. I can give you all the benefits and all the reasons that strength training would be a good idea for you. But if you don't see the benefit in it, if you don't see the value in it, you're not going to do anything about it. And that's unfortunately what happened to this guy. My mate told him, look, I'm doing all this stuff. I saw this person, they opened my eyes to how I should be moving and how I can strengthen my body and how I can spare my lower back. So, you know, that's what kettlebells are really good at. They're helping you develop all the areas needed to support your lower back, your lower back and your lower spine. But anyway, this person chose, nah, I'm just not prepared to do anything about it. I'll keep doing with what I'm doing. I'll keep plodding along. I'll keep chugging along. And poor buggers had had surgery. He's fucked his back up. So, how's that for a first episode back? That was fun. Uh, just a short one. I do just want to get things up and running. I don't want to do a 40, 45 minute spiel and then not talk to you guys again for several weeks. But, um, like I said, I am really excited to be back doing this podcast again with you. Um, I know I kind of jumped around a bit today. My baby girl has, uh, you know, she's taken a lot of my time and with good reason, she is a high priority as she should be. So that's my main focus and what I've been putting a lot of my time and effort into. Also working on the back end for my clients to, you know, build them a members only section so that they can keep getting results. So this is going to be an evolving thing that they receive to help them on their journey. So it's not just, you know, where I see somebody once, twice, three times per week and that's it. They're off on their own. No, they're going to get all the resources, all the help, all the strategies, the worksheets, tutorials they need to keep getting results as they go through their journey. So guys, it is an absolute pleasure to be back. I'm excited to get the headset back on and talk to you guys and hopefully give you a little rev up. But the last thing that I will do before I leave you to enjoy the rest of your day or rest of your evening is this. There is a parable. There is a story about the lighthouse and the tugboat. And this was mentioned to me. I read this from a mentor of mine. And it hit me like a ton of bricks initially when I read it. And then I thought about it. It's like, which one am I? Am I the tugboat or am I the lighthouse? But anyway, the parable goes like this. Those two objects or devices are designed to do the same thing. They're there to steer ships to safety from out in open water to their port or to keep them on their journey so they don't hit the rocks and perish. Okay, 
and the tugboat. The tugboat goes out one at a time. It attaches itself to one ship. It bumps into it. It has to fight off this choppy water and these waves. So already it's an arduous journey. They're having to go out into dangerous waters to try and steer these people clear and to get them to safety. All right. That's the tugboat. They go out one venture at a time, one trip at a time. I go out and I save this one boat or one ship, and then they return back to shore. So they keep going out, in and out, in and out from the port, direct these ships or these boats to where they need to go. So hopefully they don't hit the rocks, crack the ship and drown and die. The lighthouse does the same job, but it never has to move. The lighthouse is steadfast in its location. It does not move. All it does is keep shining its light around and around. So it doesn't matter where the ships are coming from. They can all, as long as they're paying attention, they can all see this light. And they know where the lighthouse is. So therefore, they know where land is. They know where the rocks are. They know where safety is. They know if I keep going in this direction, I'm going to run into the rocks and I'm going to lose my ship. I'm going to drown. So as long as they know where the lighthouse is, they can direct themselves to safety. And the reason that I share this message with you is this. I used to be the tugboat. As a coach and as a personal trainer, I used to be a a tugboat. I used to go out and try and help every single person I could. Somebody says, oh, I don't like the way my body looks or the way I feel, I'm, I'm weak as shit. Or, you know, I hate being skinny fat or I hate being skinny, whatever it is. And I'd be like, hey, I would poke and prod and encourage and motivate this person to be like, hey, come and do something about it. I can help you. Yada, yada, yada. And at the end of the day, what ends up, what ended up happening is these people would never actually take action. And as a coach, as a trainer, knowing that I could help these, these people, it would make me really frustrated. Going out to this person saying, hey, I can help you, I can assist you. This person's complaining, hey, I'll come over and try and save you. And then they don't do anything about it. Someone else says, help, help. So I'm over there and I'm trying to encourage and you know steer this person in the right direction, I'm trying to give people resources and information and help and programs. And at the end of the day, what ends up happening is the, tug, the tugboat gets tired. The tugboat eventually gets dinged up, banged up, and it runs out of fuel and eventually has to get replaced. That is what happens in the fitness industry for a lot of coaches, and that's why the turnover is so big. And I've now got to a point where I will not be this tugboat. I will not keep trying to save people. I would rather be the lighthouse. Steadfast in my approach, because I know what works, I know what I believe in, and I also know what I'm really good at. So my goal, whether it be through this podcast, whether it be through my articles, my social media posts, my newsletter, whatever it is, however you connect with me, my goal is to be the lighthouse. I will always be here. I am always here to help and assist when you are ready. But I will not keep going to individuals who are half in and half out, half committed, half serious, because that's how you end up burning out. And I'm not prepared to do that. I will help those who want to be helped. Just like that man before, my mate was the tugboat. He was poking him, prodding him, encouraging him, saying, hey, this worked for me. I know 100% with full conviction, this can help you. And this guy chose not to do anything about it. And unfortunately, he paid the price. He now has to live with the consequences of those actions. And that might sound a bit harsh, especially first podcast back. I don't care. (laughs) My goal is to tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. So if you're at a point where maybe you've fallen off the wagon, maybe, you know, it's coming to 2022 and you want to get a head start on next year, maybe now is the time. But I'm not going to, you know, go and hassle you. I'm not going to be the tugboat and poke you and prod you and motivate you. You have to learn to be self-motivated. So if you want to make a change, but you don't know how, that's perfect. That's fine. I can help you with that. If it's not me, I'm sure another coach or trainer could help you with that too. But until such a point, you're ready to actually do something about it and commit, 
and go all in on your goals and pursue them, nothing's really going to change. Like I said, my training program for the next six months, for half a year, I'm doing the same two exercises three times a week. I'm willing to be bored and monotonous with my training because I know at the end of it, I'm going to be 33% stronger. That's my motivation right there. Jesse, how would you like to be 33% stronger in six months? Fuck yeah, let me, how do I do that? I'll follow that plan any day of the week. So that's where you've got to make up your mind. What do you want? Because if you've been bitching, moaning, complaining about your situation and nothing's changing, the fact is this, you really don't want to change. Because if you did, you'd be taking action to do something about it. So right now, you're just paying lip service to it. You like the attention that you get by saying you have a problem. So, the wake-up call is back. I will be your lighthouse. I will show you the way. I will shine my light in the direction that I feel the world needs to go, that you need to travel, the path of strength. Because that works. And it works when you commit to it. And it is a process. It's not a happening overnight success story. It's a put in the work every single day and get a little bit better. And if you do that for 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, 180 days, 365 days, you will be a completely different person. And I know that because I've lived it. Nobody came out of the womb being really fucking strong. They worked at it day in, day out. So that's my aspiration for you listening is, yes, we will be getting more regular with these episodes and podcasts. Okay, and I, I, would ho- I hope you can keep me accountable to that because I have had a few people reach out. Thank you. You know who you are. But the goal is to get better every day, a little bit. If you can do that, you will be well on your way to being a stronger, healthier, and happier version of yourself. So that's it for the return, the revival of the wake up call. I will speak to you guys really soon. If you have any suggestions, topics you would like me to cover, please get in touch with me through my social media and uh, I will do my best to keep adding to my show notes for the next podcast episode. But until then, have a great day and get a little bit better. Find something that challenges you, gets you out of your comfort zone so you can become a better person than you were yesterday. Until next time, guys, stay strong. If you loved the Wake Up Call, found it entertaining, or got some benefit out of listening, I would appreciate you helping me to spread the word. Please share it with a friend or on social media so that you can pay it forward and give someone else the opportunity to improve themselves like you just have. Thanks for listening. We'll see you soon for another episode.